Around two people in every hundred have a learning disability. How their disability affects their lives depends very much on how severe the disability is, but also what type of support and opportunities they have. What we do know from research is that people with learning disabilities experience a lot of inequalities. They are less likely to be independent than others of a similar age, have fewer opportunities to do enjoyable things, have fewer friends and social contacts, and find it much harder to find work, even if they're very keen to do so. These inequalities often result in them feeling and very much being segregated from society. So the question we are facing is, why are people with learning disabilities so often excluded? And what needs to happen to make them more included in society? People with learning disabilities say the biggest challenge they face is not their disability, but the fact that they often suffer bullying and harassment. Eight out of ten people with learning disabilities are the victim of hate crime at some point in their lives, and most have to endure the sort of low-level abuse teasing and name-calling that does not catch media or police attention, but has very negative effects on its victims. To illustrate this point, we'll now show you a clip from the film Tormented Lives. This is a documentary about abuse and harassment of people with learning disabilities that is sadly only too frequent in our country. In the clip, you'll hear Christopher talk about abuse he's experienced, but also his strong desire to be an accepted member of society and the many things he has to offer. Someone who's living in the community and having real problems is Christopher Burke. He has a condition called hydrocephalus, more commonly known as water on the brain. This means he has a learning difficulty, and physically he does look different. It's made him a victim of constant hate crime, leaving him isolated, vulnerable and scared. Yet Christopher could read when he was two, has 17 qualifications in IT, and a passion for music. It's computers. I can build them, repair them, pro program them. And I loved writing music for years now. Except the problem I always had was mixing it. And Hastings being about 10 years behind the rest of the world, there are no music mixing classes for, for anyone over and over 25. So, believe it or not, I had to go to the shoreham, which is like three hours away. When we had one, one lesson so far, and this is my, my first home, homework piece. Every time he goes out, Christopher makes sure he has a pocket full of change. It's almost like paying protection money to people he knows just to get down the street. Have you just come from? Oh, just, 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 I'm As he walks by the beach, a man steps out and confronts Christopher. He asks him for money. Please, please, come on. This is a normal occurrence for Christopher, and he knows from experience that if he refuses, he'll be open to attack. I've got the same people. Um, well, no, I'm not having them. That bloke with the orange beard, beard asked you to, to give him, him three, three quid to get past him. <laughs> What's the matter, Chris? <laughs> Is it making you scared? No, it's nothing to do with that. It's just, I just see myself spending my whole life here. And when I'm walking around, I think it's a shame. Frustration of it, of, of it all just, 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 just gets to me. Christopher has, in the last eight years, been rehoused five times due to abuse from his neighbours and people around him. After being burgled and intimidated in his previous flats, he was rehoused into sheltered accommodation. It's not ideal for Christopher, as all the other residents are elderly. Christopher, Please hello, meet you. I'm Rosa. Please meet you. How do you do? Thank you for letting me come and see you. Okay. Christopher, would you mind if I took off my no, shoes and, and, and sat sure. curled sure. up? No, I'm sort of happier sure. talking that way. Is that all right? Yes, yes. love the time now. Oh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Very observant. Thank you. How long have you lived here? 
a year, a year and a half. Before, so where did you live before that? Before I was in St. Leonard's. That area of St. Leonard's is all um, um, drug, drugs and alcoholics. And while I was working in, in Seaview, I used to work, work in there voluntarily. A girl came, came in and shot boiling water all over, all over me. Ah! That, um, that's, that, that, that's, that, that, that's both, um, both legs. legs. That is terrible. Is it, it, it like that? That's, that's, that's like after about five skin grafts. Um, oh, dear um, Lord. That was, one, was three months in um, the East Greenstead Burns unit. Mm. Uh, what happened to your Ian, head there? Ian, um, that's, that, that was, was um, a, c- a couple of months ago, well, about six, um, six weeks ago. Um, bloke, bloke, bloke that um, outside side cross cutters. It's terrible. And he, he had chunky wings on, and he just smacked, smacked my head with, oh. with, 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 with the chunky wings on. How I, how I lost, lost my teeth was, a bloke come, comes up to me and goes, what's it like being a retard then? And, 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 and so I went to him, that's what I was, I was about, about to ask you, the same thing. And, 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 and he pushed me, so I fell over, and he, he stomped my face with Doc Martens on. Oh. That's that's where the one the one ones who run riots everywhere is used used to live. I I would just I would just um um spack um spack mo mo they they used to call um call call, um, call me no good good stupid retard spastic. Why aren't you 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 in a home home home? Why 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 do you bother bother coming out here? And they they used to kick me 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 to bits. They they used to punch um um punch me me and I'd sort sort of curl up up in the little square and they'd all be kicking me. Christopher fiercely defends his right to live independently, but is keen to be a useful member of society. And I I feel differently if I manage man, man, to get a job. It's not as if you haven't applied for jobs. You've applied for jobs. Tom. Close. It was a, a computer job I could uh, had, had done done with with, with with my eyes shut, and and so I went straight straight in in, in up the stairs and said and said I want to uh, to apply for a job in the window, and blonde bull, bulldog behind the counter on um, the counter went there's nothing for you in the window and though and and went yes yes there is I'll show you and she went no there's nothing for you in the window. That's disgusting. The job's gone now of course, but yeah, but that's not the point. And I tried applying for lots of jobs and. Um, other people kept, kept, kept guessing them. He needs a break, you know. We have to get Christopher a job. He's got so much to offer. He's got all these skills, and yet he's there, you know, living in an old people's home, and he feels completely inadequate. It's got to change. And we need to find him a job. It's not as if he isn't capable. He's had jobs in the past. He still has fond memories of working in London and being part of a thriving community. Thirty years ago, I used to work in one of the city foods over there, carrying sacks of potato and flour. That used to come off all over you, and if it was raining, you used to get coats thick in mashed potato, and you were going around scraping mashed potato off, off yourself. As you have seen, Christopher is being tormented due to the way he looks, but he has the capacity to work and contribute to society. In fact, you'd very much prefer to do this rather than live in isolation. Government policies promote social inclusion and yet research shows that there's still a lot of segregation. For example, children with learning disabilities often still feel very much shut out even when they're in mainstream schools. We also know that while many members of the public hold very sympathetic and helpful attitudes towards people with learning disabilities, many of us often turn a blind eye to the type of harassment shown in the film. The key message is that unless we all take responsibility for bullying and harassment, people like Christopher will continue to be tormented on a regular basis. Thank you for watching. Please complete the short questionnaire that follows and make sure you take the opportunity to leave your details for the prize draw as a way of us saying thanks for taking part. We will not store or use your details in any way other than for the prize draw.